DC has another timeline known as Earth One, which is basically a more realistic take on our favorite DC superheroes. And we've brought you Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and the Teen Titans, the realistic versions of these superheroes. Today, we're going to begin our new adventure, the realistic version of the Green Lantern, a space epic beyond proportions. Enjoy the first half of Green Lantern Earth One. Over the recent years, space exploration has changed. What was once funded by the government is now funded wholly by private companies to extract precious metals. These metals are used for the Earth's ever-growing needs for new technology, which these private companies are spearheading. Along the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, Captain Seton receives a message from Earth that one of their competitors has just struck a 17-ton load on another asteroid. One of the miners asks if this means that they are earthbound now, and Seton tells them that they don't know if their contract is pulled yet, but she needs everyone to return. Another miner, Volkov, gets ready to return to the station when his partner tells him no, he's not returning. Volkov asks what does he mean, and his partner, Harold Jordan, also known as Hal Jordan, is done with Earth. There's no point in turning back now, their contract hasn't been pulled yet. Volkov then asks Hal how long has it been since he's been to Earth, and Hal responds telling him since the Arrowhead launched. Volkov says, wait, back when NASA was still around? Wasn't that like 10 years ago? You haven't been to Earth since then? Wait, does that mean that Hal Jordan is a part of NASA? Hal doesn't respond, but instead loads up another scanning cartridge for his mining tool, and he gets back to work. He begins firing into the ground, and the cartridge ricochets off the surface as if it is hitting something metallic. Hal leans down to brush away some of the dirt, and as he does, he finds a metal plate with a strange marking on it. A few hours later, Hal radios back to Volkov that he needs to come to his location, and as he does, Volkov asks, what is it? Find a big deposit? Because we could use some good news. As Volkov climbs over the crater, he sees Hal uncovering what seems to be an alien spacecraft. Volkov runs up telling him that they need to report this before they can touch it, and Hal says that he'd much rather do some exploration first, as he opens the hatch. Hal climbs into the spacecraft and Volkov follows behind, and the first thing that they do find is a large, halfway destroyed robot. The two decide to continue looking around, and then they notice a faint green light coming out of some debris scattered around the ship. As they pull the pieces that are surrounding it away, Hal finds a lantern-like object and says that it's some kind of battery. Then Hal looks around and notices something else, a dead alien in green clothes that looked like he's been there for quite some time. They walk over and they look at the alien and they notice him wearing a green ring, one that looks similar to what the lantern battery looked like. Before the two of them can wonder any further though, there's a shift in the ship and the two of them are thrown off balance. Just then Hal and Volkov get a call from Seton telling them that their contract has officially been canceled. They are aborting the mission and they're heading back to Earth. Time for them to come back home. Hal says that they may have just uncovered something big here. They seemingly have found an alien vessel, something that they're going to need another pair of eyes on. Judging by the dust, this thing's been sitting around here since even before Sputnik. Seton then says, what is he basing this off of? And Hal says they have a couple of solid pieces of evidence. She should really just hop on a shuttle and... But before he can finish, the ship shifts again and begins to fall closer into the crater. Hal runs to the hatch telling Volkov that they need to get out of here and step carefully. The two men climb slowly back onto the ship and they inch their way towards the ground when the ship begins to fall. Hal and Volkov jump off the falling ship onto the crater and Hal tells Seton that he'll explain everything when they return. And a short while later, as Hal drives the shuttle back to the station, Seton tells tells him that they're going to have to turn this one in. Sadly for them, they won't be the ones investigating it. Behind him, Volkov opens up his bag and pulls out the lantern battery and the ring that he took from the ship. He slides the ring onto his finger and he holds it close to the battery. The ring begins to glow and then it shoots off a beam of energy tearing through the shuttle. The vacuum of space begins to suck Volkov out and Hal quickly reaches out to grab his hand. The battery rockets out of the ship and into space and as the pull of space becomes stronger, Hal begins to lose his grip on Volkov's hand pulling the ring off of him. Volkov is thrown into the void of space and Hal shouts for him, but no one can hear him. Back at the station, Seton and the others watch as the shuttle breaks apart, asking what are they doing, and just then Volkov's body slams into the window. Seton says that the readings are stating that there's an overload in the ship. A moment later, Hal's shuttle explodes in green light and out of it, Hal Jordan floats in that green light. Something else at that same moment begins to wake up. 
the robot that Hal saw back on the alien vessel. Over in the front of the mining ship, Hal looks around and says, Okay, he can breathe, that's good. He has no way of speaking with the people on the station, and that's kind of bad. He looks around and he sees everyone on the station can see him, and he places his feet onto one of the shuttle's panels and jumps off towards the station. As he begins to float on, he loosens his grip and he releases the ring by mistake, and that's when the green glow quickly begins to fade. He struggles trying to reach and grab for the ring, and as his finger touches it, the green glow returns. He takes it, sliding it onto his finger, and as he does, a symbol appears on his chest. One that looks just like the ring. After recovering, Hal makes his way towards the station, pointing to the hatch to let him in. One of the miners runs over, but Seaton stops him, telling him that she knows this is going to hurt, but they can't let him in. They don't know if he's infected with radiation or something. Hal watches as everyone stops moving, and Seaton grabs a board and begins to write. She holds it up so that Hal can see it, and Hal reads it out loud. Risk too great. Can't expose crew to radiation. Our thoughts are with you. After Hal reads that, he closes his eyes, and he says, of course, he understands. Just then he notices something. The robot from before rockets up, punching him in the back. He's knocked away, and as he regains his balance, he thinks, what if he could do what Volkov did? He destroyed their shuttle. Maybe he can do the same to the robot. He aims the ring at the robot, and the robot charges at him, launching him into a nearby asteroid. Hal spins back, firing a beam of energy at the robot, but ends up missing completely. The robot begins to prepare another attack, but this time Hal focuses his energy, and he jumps off of the asteroid, punching straight into the robot's torso. The force from the jump sends both Hal and the robot flying throughout space, but Hal doesn't let go. Instead, he concentrates on the energy, and as the ring begins to glow bright, the robot is ripped to pieces. However, with exerting so much energy at once, Hal's ring begins to fade, and he slowly begins to feel the air being sucked out of his lungs. As everything begins to fade black, he blinks his eyes, waking up on an operating table. And he asks, What happened? Captain Seaton? Anyone? As he looks at the tube, an alien creature jumps out at him, and Hal shouts, falling off of the table. He rips out the tubes that are on his mouth, and he runs out of the room, and only a few steps in, he begins to feel a bright light shining down upon him. He sees that he's not on the station, or on Earth, for that matter. He takes a step forward, feeling himself slip off of the ridge, and he spins back to grab onto the ledge before falling off into the chasm. The alien then reaches down to help Hal up and tells him, It's okay. My name is Kilowog, and we're on the same team. Kilowog holds up his hand, showing the same ring that Hal is wearing, and he tells him, I'm a lantern too. Now let's get you back inside. A few hours later, back inside of the lab, Kilowog says that he's really lucky. He honestly didn't think the tissue he designed would graft onto his skin so well. Hal touches the parts of his skin that Kilowog grafted the tissue onto, asking, Where am I? And Kilowog yells, Oh, Bolivax Vix! Not to be confused with Bolivax Vel. Totally different. We're still an independent world, remote and isolated, sure, but sovereign. But you don't have anything to fear. All of the lab techs are out on field work. I sent them all out when there was a distress call coming out of your ring. Speaking of, there are so many questions to be asked. As a scientist, please do not be offended, but I must ask you, what breed of alien are you? Hal tells him, Earth human. And Kilowog tells him, That's incredible! I've never heard of an Earth human! But like I said, we're a little isolated over here. Now, on to the next important subject. See, the ring was passed down to me after the death of my predecessor. I had very little to go on. There isn't much about the core, just stories and folktales, so perhaps you could teach me about the ring. That way, I can be a true Green Lantern. Hal stares for a moment and he asks him, What? I don't know anything about this ring. I just found it. Kilowog tells him, wait, that's impossible. And Hal continues telling him that he's sorry, but he doesn't know what to tell him. He doesn't even know how they understand each other. Kilowog shouts, that's impossible. No one but a powerful and skilled lantern could have done what you did. You killed a manhunter. Hal blinks, asking, a what? Kilowog points over at the broken manhunter that Hal destroyed, telling him that he's been studying this to try and find a flaw in it. But what he is saying is that he didn't defeat it? Hal looks at the manhunter and tells him, No, I did fight this, but I thought it actually killed me. As for these lanterns, I don't know anything about them. All I know is that this robot thing attacked and I acted on instinct, just using the tool that was in my hand, but does that mean that there are more of these manhunters? Kilowog tells him, The world of Earth humans must be far, far away. There was once a planet called Oa, where the Green Lanterns came from. With them came the tyranny of the manhunters. The Green Lantern Corps was once based on the central world of Oa. They were peacekeepers, but that was a long time ago. The Manhunters rose up, killing all of them, and the rings were scattered throughout the galaxy. Mine was passed down for generations, but I've heard that there are others. Some say that the Owens created the Manhunters as well, but those are also just stories. But now, the Manhunters control everything, pretty much everything in the entire galaxy. Hal asks, what about here? And Kilowog tells him, Since we are isolated, the Manhunters haven't come here yet. No aliens are permitted on Bolivar Vic. None of us can leave either, though. 
And now that you are healed up, it is time for you to go before someone catches you here. Hal asks him, how was it that he was flying before his ring is dead and... Kilowatt turns back from the closet, holding out a lantern battery, telling him that he can fix that. Hal holds out his ring and it begins to glow, and Hal asks, is there a right way to do this? And Kilowatt tells him, this isn't magic, just hold the ring there and it'll charge. Hal pulls back, telling him, wait, I'm a pilot. For the sake of my own crew, I would never take something into the air without testing it. If this thing isn't magic, then it's a machine, a tool that can be mastered. And that means before I leave, I need to know how this thing works. A short while later, Hal and Kilowog are flying around the planet, and Kilowog explains that he likes to fasten his power battery to his belt so he's never caught short. So if he's ever to find another battery, he should probably do the same. Hal begins to ask where could he find one, and then he begins to lose focus on flying and he falls out of the sky. Kilowog shouts that he needs to concentrate, and just as Hal does, he begins to pull himself back into the air laughing. <laughs> I've always wanted to do this. Kilowog then tells him, come on, there's some other things that I need to show you. Kilowog sets up a target on a rock, and Hal begins to practice shooting. But Hal ends up creating a blast way bigger than the rock, and he blows a hole into the cliff. Later, as the two of them sit down to eat, Hal says that he's surprised. He hasn't eaten solid food for days, and this stuff is great. Kilowog laughs, telling him, We're nearly identical, biochemically speaking, so there's no surprise that we like the same food. But as the two begin to eat, a light shines upon them, and a voice calls out to Kilowog to stand down. He knows the rules! Step aside! They're here for the alien. A group of aliens with guns begins to walk up, and Kilowog yells, I never agreed to your rules, and neither did any of my predecessors. It's my duty to! The general tells Kilowog that they're here to protect their own, and make sure no threats come in from the outside. Hal steps up, telling him, Wait a second, Kilowog here saved my life. And the general tells him that the ring he has on may translate his words, but he has no understanding of the kind of damage that he's doing here. Restrain him! Kilowog holds up his ring, telling everyone that they are not taking him, but before they can go on, another officer looks back and they see dozens of manhunters flying out of Kilowog's lab. Just then, the general is hit with an energy blast, tearing him apart, and more manhunters fly down, firing upon everyone. As more come, Hal and Kilowog try to hold them off, but soon they begin to get overwhelmed. Hal is knocked to the ground, and as he looks up, he sees all of the manhunters focusing their attacks on Kilowog. He gets up, rushing over to pull Kilowog out of the blast, and with that, they rocket into space. Pretty crazy cliffhanger, huh? Well, don't forget to check out the rest of the Green Lantern Earth One storyline by buying the book at your favorite bookstore, local comic book store, or even online. We will get to the conclusion of this eventually, but since the book did just come out, we can't give you the entire story. It literally came out like last week sometime at the time of recording this story right here. Don't forget to check out the rest of the Earth One books that we have on display in our playlist, and you can find them all on Amazon or your local comic book store. And don't forget get you can find me on twitter at comic story and where i go crazy all the time talking about my favorite comics and we review our favorite comics on there in 280 characters makes for some interesting reviews i'll see you guys next time right here at comic storian